Hi, this is Dr. Gregory Sadler. I'm a professor of philosophy and the president and founder of an educational consulting company called Reason.io, where we put philosophy into practice. I've studied and taught philosophy for over 20 years, and I find that many people run into difficulties reading classic philosophical texts. Sometimes it's the way things are said or how the text is structured, but the concepts themselves are not always that complicated, and that's where I come in. To help students and lifelong learners, I've been producing longer lecture videos and posting them to YouTube. Many viewers say they find them useful. What you're currently watching is part of a new series of shorter videos, each of them focused on one core concept from an important philosophical text. I hope you find it useful as well. In Chapter 5 of Book 1 of his work of Stoic Ethics on Duties, Cicero is going to tell his son, uh, Marcus, that everything that is right, everything that is honestum, and we'll talk about that term in just a moment, stems or arises from one of, of four things. Those four things are actually going to be the cardinal virtues of wisdom, justice, courage, and temperance, and he's going to characterize them a bit. But we want to dwell for a moment before we go into that on this, this uh, term, the honestum. This, this is the word that we get honest and honesty from, and it means something that is good, but not good uh, because it's only good for something else. It's not a useful good, although it certainly can be advantageous uh, or useful, but it's not good primarily because of that. It's good intrinsically. It is what is good in itself. So Cicero is, is, is interested here in clarifying the nature and the origin of our duties. That's why it's the book on duties, De Officius. And so he's saying that our duties, our, our sense of moral oughtness, our, our uh, uh, you know, rightness, uh, our conception of that arises from these, these four sources. And we may be mixed up about this, but if we think it through, he thinks that we're going to arrive at these and that will, you know, by examining them, analyzing them, seeing what wisdom, what justice, what courage, what temperance really include and encompass, we'll be able to figure out how we ought to run our lives. Remember that one of the goals of the, the book on duties is to provide us with the rules by which we can attain the highest good for ourselves, the summum bonum or the, uh, you know, uh, finis uh, uh, bonorum, the, the, the end of goods, the, 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 the sum, the highest good. So each of these is going to be characterized in a certain way. When he tells us in this, this paragraph that everything right arises, uh, the word that he's using there is, is oritur, it, it, it stems from, it, it arises from, it has its origin in. And he doesn't actually name the virtues at that point, although, of course, it's in the back of his mind. What he tells us instead is what the, what the type of activities or the type of concerns would be that would, would give us the, the right. So he tells us that one of these is what he calls the, what we're translating here is the full perception and handling of true or of the truth. And so he says, um, in perspicentia, uh, very solertique, right? So a, a concern for, right? A, a handling of the truth. And in full, like, you know, entire looking around, full uh, understanding of, of what is true. Not just, you know, grasping a fact and being done with it, but grasping how the facts are related to each other. And we'll, we'll talk about that a bit more. Then he names three things that fit into the, you could say, basket of justice. He says, conserving human society, literally the society of, of human beings. So, 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 kietas humanorum, right? Giving each what they deserve. This is a traditional conception of justice. And then the faithful fulfillment of the things that we have agreed to, or a little bit more uh, literally, things that we have contracted for. Um, 
each of those is something that we, we ought to do, right? So that's one of these four sources. Then he talks about the greatness and the strength of a noble spirit. And now this is not necessarily what we would associate with courage, but for the Stoics and for Cicero, what we can call great mindedness is, is connected with courage. There's more involved in courage as we're going to see, but this is the way that he frames it here. And then he talks about the order, ordine and moderation, modo of what is said and done. And so each of these yields us, when we, when we put it together, we say, well, what actually provides us with that as, as a possibility? Uh, you know, the truth and seeking the truth, trying to understand it from all sides, that's wisdom. And wisdom is what accomplishes that. These other things, you know, conserving human society, giving each what, it, what is due to them, uh, faithful uh, fulfillment of agreements, that is justice. Um, the greatness and strength of a noble spirit, courage, uh, order and moderation of what is said and done, temperance. And so he goes on and he, he adds a little bit more explanation for each of these in this, this uh, chapter. And I think it's worth dwelling on that because this helps us flesh out our understanding of what these four sources are. So he goes on and he says, um, we, you know, we, the one that we designated first wisdom and prudence, so sapientia and prudentia. He says these belong to the search after truth and its discovery, right? Um, the, the, the seeking out and the finding of, of truth. Um, and he, you know, he goes on and adds a little bit more to this. And he says, you know, the more that one seeks out truth, the more quickly and accurately can see and explain the reasons, the more understanding and wise he's gen generally esteemed and justly so. So this virtue is particularly concerned with truth. This virtue, justice, is concerned with other things. He says, once again, um, the, these three remaining virtues, uh, they have the task of providing and maintaining the things of which the practical business of life depends so that the relations of human being to human being and human society can be conserved. This is a, a key idea for Cicero. Justice is not just about following rules. It's not just about uh, making sure that you follow through on your contract. It's not just about giving everybody what they deserve. There's also this other aspect of making sure that we further human society, that we hold it together, that we, we uh, further the social uh, you could say desire or instinct of, of human beings, which stems from our very rationality. He goes on and he also talks about this largeness and nobility of soul that, that we find in courage. He says, it can be revealed not only in increasing one's resources and acquiring advantages for oneself and one's family, but far more in rising superior to those things. So that's a very interesting thing to say, and it's also typically stoic. Courage uh, involves, you know, not just having a, a high spirit or something like that, but in applying it and, and using it so as to acquire the things that are, are needful for life, often against resistance, often through difficulty, often facing challenges. But it also involves rising above even those and treating them as what they are really worth, which is not as much as having a virtue. Then finally, the, the fourth source, he goes on and expands by saying, orderly behavior and consistency of demeanor and self-control, these have their, their place in that department of things in which a certain amount of physical exertion and not mental activity merely is required. And he says, if we bring a certain amount of propriety and order into the transactions of daily life, we will be conserving uh, honestatum, this, this, you know, goodness in itself and decos, what is, what is befitting, what is dignified, what, what we ought to do. So each of these taken individually 
is part of what we ought to do. Cicero says that they kind of interpenetrate each other, but we can also consider each of them separately, which is what he is going to do in, in the further chapters. But we should think about all of them as, in some, some sense, encapsulating and encircling everything that is genuinely right. So what this means is we can rely on the virtues for understanding what it is that we human beings ought to do.